30 seconds to Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm going to give about 20 seconds to allow people to join before we get kicked off. Great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on modernizing your digital systems for today's demands. Today's webinar has been brought to you by Enterprise Ireland under the Client Solutions Series. My name is Saoirse Colgan and I'll be moderating today's session. Um, I sit in Enterprise Ireland's Operational Excellence and Digital Innovation team. And I'm delighted to have join me today, John Bulger uh, from version one. John Bulger is version one's global lead for application modernization and, and integration. Um, and John's here to talk to us today about the value that can be derived from a proactive, sustained and continued approach to modernizing systems. And he'll also share some best practices uh, and key considerations as you're starting and embarking on your modernization journey. And um, before I hand over to John, just a little bit of housekeeping. This session will run for approximately 45 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, uh, which I'm sure you will, please feel free to use the Q&A function and we'll allow for a time at the end um, to, to address those questions. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome John um, and pass over to John for a presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Sergio. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, um, first of all, thanks very much, Sersha and team, for inviting me on to do this session. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you to everyone who's here on the call today for taking a time out from your day to, to listen in. I hope you find it useful. Um, I uh, hope to just walk through a little bit around the drivers for modernization, you know, some of the trends we're starting to see, and maybe how we, how we can best approach and, and what good looks like, okay? Um, uh, very interested to get your feedback and to have your questions, so please do put it into the Q&A as we go along. Um, just to introduce myself a little bit more, um, so uh, I work for version one, so we're an Irish IT consultancy based out of Dublin, running since 1996, um, and uh, you know, we're customers across the UK and Ireland, but recently expanded into the US. Um, we, we, we are focused very much on IT consulting. Um, and application modernization integration is one of the six pillars of what version one does. And my role in version one is to um, lead that pillar and to tell our story around application modernization and integration and to understand you know, what is it that customers need and what does the future hold for customers and what are the industry trends that are occurring that will impact our customers and that therefore need to be reflected in how we deliver our services. What does modernizing the modernization of the future systems look like? Um, and so that's something that I'm, I'm very heavily involved in trying to have those conversations with customers and understand their needs better and to drive that forwards. I've been in version one about 20 years now. So 20 years consulting um, and delivering uh, systems for uh, public and private sector customers across UK and Ireland. Um, so I've been doing application modernization a long time. It's my own background, my own bread and butter. Um, and so some of this is just as well as my experience of, of having done that for a while with different customers and trying to reflect that here and hopefully then uh, just maybe helping you on your journey with modernization. So the first thing I'd say is that it's actually really hard, right? And if it wasn't, we probably wouldn't be on this call, right? Um, you know, we all have this vision and the reality is much more difficult. And it's a lot more of an uphill struggle with manual workarounds and and old systems and yeah, Excel flying around and whatever else it is, right? So you know you're not alone. The biggest organizations also struggle with this challenge as well, um, and it's an ongoing struggle and it's something that you have to keep at. And we'll probably never get to that uh, the vision. Uh, that's that's a really hard piece to attain unless you have unlimited budget. Um, but we still have to to keep at it. And, and the reason, I suppose, why it's so hard is that actually there's lots of challenges around, you know, modernization and having modern digital IT systems. 
Um, and ultimately, that quite often it comes down to, you know, there's only so much budget, right? And how much? Where do we put that budget? Where do we assign our money? Where do we get most bang for buck from our investment in IT? Um, and similarly, we quite often see that actually there can be a divide between the the drivers, uh, and and so sometimes we see modernization as purely technical endeavor, right? And it's purely about we got legacy technology and we need to fix it and we need to, to uplift it. And that takes time and it's expensive. And the business sometimes then don't see the value from that investment. And if we don't deliver it in a more agile and incremental way, it can take a long time to deliver that type of transformation and modernization. And so then you couple that with what is perceived as low business value, there can be a little bit of so what, right? Or if it's not broken, why fix it? Okay. Additionally, there are other challenges. You know, modernization typically brings you towards a more modern technology stack. That can bring its own challenges in terms of your capability and your skills and your readiness to, to use those technologies. And so that can be quite daunting. Um, and so where you have mission critical systems that are running on legacy technology, sometimes the, the idea is you, know, you, you put the head in the sand and you don't tackle that challenge, right? But the problem is with that approach is, yes, we can do that and we can prioritize nice, shiny new things. Um, but if we do have those leg systems or if we don't invest in having modern IT systems that serve the needs, that can create its own friction and it reduces business agility and it stops you from being able to innovate more effectively and to respond to change more effectively. Right. Uh, and it starts to introduce all this additional cost in the form of technical debt. Now, when we talk about technical debt, it's actually something that's that, that's the cost of uh, the, the technology, le the legacy technology on your business. And we're seeing that that's actually consuming up to 40 percent of IT budget It's starting to accrue on top of each other. Right. And so. What you find then is you're spending more and more money on just keeping the lights on. And so technical debt is something actually, you know, I don't know if anybody's remember this ad from uh, 2007 financial uh, regulator. Uh, I, I don't know what a tracker mortgage is. You know, quite often what we see is people don't know what technical debt is. And it's not a widely understood term across outside of IT, at least. Right. But the problem with it is that technical debt is something that affects all of the business and uh, you know that is not just purely technical it actually did this is what it looks like from a business perspective you start to see that actually you're not able to respond to change as quickly it costs more to make that change your change becomes more brittle you're, you're starting to experience uh, disruption and downtime um, and you're starting to have aging interfaces that don't really support the needs of your users and so this becomes really important in terms of allowing you to make sure that you are able to you know, innovate and be agile and have cost-effective IT that supports your business needs. Now, couple that, right? So that's, that's the as is, and that's the cost of just getting your systems up to today's technology standards and have them modern, right? But we're also seeing a significant shift in expectations of tomorrow's applications, right? And what users expect from your application tomorrow. And so things like actually Copilot, you know, it's, it's, it's embedded into Microsoft Copilot, but actually we can see a future where every users will expect to be able to converse with applications, uh, any application, right? And so, so there'll be a Copilot-like capability embedded into many of the business applications of the future and your end user applications. And users will expect to be able to transact and interact with you in this manner. I don't know if any of you remember that film, Her, which is very interesting, right? Science fiction, but actually it's turning into science fact. And that's something where we're seeing now where with the rise of generative AI is that actually intelligent agents will act on behalf of users, right? And so it's no longer just about being able to have responsive service design and web and mobile, but actually you will have agent-to-agent -agent interactions where people, uh, personalized digital agents who understand you, who understand your needs, 
who have a lot of context about what you do can actually then transact on your behalf, right? And we're already seeing that coming through. Um, you know, OpenAI have released their GPTs where you can build your own bot. Bill Gates on his blog has is just in the last week or two posted on this very topic about agents acting on users' behalf, right? And so in the context of modernization, right, what does that mean? And yes, we need to deal with get having modern IT systems to, to deal with today's demand, but this stuff is coming, right? It's coming down the, the line at us. And a, a real example of where we've seen this, right, is actually we also see that applications become personalized and adaptive. And so what does that mean, right? Think of the Netflix of this world. And so how can we have personalized experiences? And an example that we've done actually with the National Museum of Computing in UK, Bletchley Park, is we built a generative AI based application that allowed us to serve up their museum content to different personas with different content, different messaging and different imagery based on who they were. So we're able to say, are you a preteen or are you a teenager? What language do you want to, to consume this in? And actually we're able to use generative AI to reframe the message appropriate to that persona. And so that's actually live with in the National Museum of Computing at the moment. And just shows you the power of what this will be like. So think of your own business in terms of the different personas that you interact with and your different end users and whether they want to consume your services in different mediums, different formats, different ways. OK, and so how can you start to think about that to embrace that opportunity for your own business? So that's as well as just giving you a setting the scene a little bit around the need for modernization. There's a whole piece there around, okay, making sure that you have agile and effective and efficient systems, but also about future-proofing your systems to not only meet today's needs, but tomorrow's needs, right? So how do you do that? And, and I, I suppose we always say that it's about business-led business modernization, okay? Technology is just a means to an end. Right. We're here to serve the business. We're here to grow the business. And we need to make sure that whatever we do from a technology perspective gets most bang for buck. And we're getting return on investment on that technology. Right. So the, mo the important thing is that you root it in the needs of your business. And it's all about finding, enhancing and protecting that business value. OK, making sure that we are measuring how we, the outcome that we're using good technology, we're delivering fast Right, we're delivering fa fail fast. We deliver early. We continuous in, uh, delivery, and that allows you to 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 reap those rewards earlier and to achieve that. We see modern IT delivery approaches changing, right? So, the advent of agile and lean methodologies has changed how we deliver services and how we're seeing it across the board with our customers in terms of how they deliver IT. And, and I think the driver for that is IT used to be seen as a cost, right? And it's not anymore. It's seen as a differentiator. It's seen as something that will actually enable business agility, allow you to create a unique selling point and to give you that uh, leg up. And so there's more and more interest and investment in IT to help make that, that differentiator. And therefore we're starting to see it's, it's no longer just about IT driving the applications, but the business users and the business units are taking ownership of those. And so we're moving, seeing this move towards a business-led approach with federated accountability. And what that means is that it's no longer just IT are given a budget and off to go and knock it out, but actually the, the, the accountability happens across the business and it's IT and business working together to uh, deliver the application modernization and the application estate that the business needs. And so that brings this, uh, this change in mindset away from, we, didn't, we need a new system, go put it in place, and then we're done and walk away. Instead, we're, we're seeing it moving towards a product approach, okay? And what that means is you have application owners who have maintained, who are, who are responsible for that application. And, who maintain a backlog of new functionality, who constantly review 
that application and understand its fitness for the business and uh, how it's serving the customers and how it can be adapted. And so it's a continuous modernization approach, moving away from one-off projects towards product approach and a continuous investment that makes sure that the IT estate remains aligned to the business needs. And it's, it's always serving those needs and it's using proper technology, but that it's more importantly aligned to the business process that's needed of that day. Um, big move away from big bang approaches where it was, you know, a, a large scale implementation that might take six months, a year, two years, much more towards an agile delivery approach. And what that means is it's just MVP and you're trying to ship a new release as often as you can, that delivers business value. And that way you're making small corrections and releasing incrementally that that de-risks your delivery, but also helps deliver value more quickly, right? Uh, the rise of, there's a couple of things here um, that I call out, SaaS, um, low code, and actually the, um, Applications are such as Dynamic CRM and Salesforce and ServiceNow, they're all actually starting to capture this platform opportunity where they are a platform on which you can build your own applications because they have this composable architecture. That means you can config, they have all these capabilities built into these solutions. That means you can then compose your own application on top of theirs. All right. And so we're seeing that move away from uh, more just solely bespoke and, and product and cuts towards that SaaS model, towards low code, which is a great option as well. And, and then also that platform approach. And as I touched on, trying to decompose applications down into the subsequent capabilities. That means you can reuse those and get most value for those capabilities across your organization so that you're not building the same functionality into many of your different applications, right? Now, what does that look like, right? And how do we approach uh, the modernization? I suppose this, this, um, this becomes more obvious when you've got that legacy application. And we quite often see this in terms of a monolithic application and it has value, it's serving a purpose, but it's on outdated technology. And how can we approach that and, and modernize that and split it up so that we can deliver this incrementally uh, and in a most cost-effective way? And I suppose that all comes down to, um, you know, decomposing that application down into its relevant capabilities to start to break it down and understand how I can uh, deliver each of those capabilities as a separate piece and starting to eat the elephant one bite at a time, right? And so quite often we see that as a strangler pattern where you're taking your application and you're taking pieces off and moving those across to your new platform. And that allows you to, to move off that legacy technology in a safe and controlled manner and um, delivering it in the right time frame, but also delivering with value as quick as you can. Now, where have we done this? I suppose I just want to just to bring this to life for a moment. Um, yeah, version one built um, uh, a modernized Musgraves invoice system, right? And this was uh, responsible. This was built on a legacy technology called COBOL, right? Uh, and so this is what all the banks run on, and and uh, uh, this is really old um, mainframe technology. But it's the core of many business systems. And so we actually worked with Musgrave to replace that legacy mainframe mission critical system that was absolutely the heartbeat of their operations, right? But we were able to successfully migrate them bit by bit across to a new technology stack, a cloud native technology stack that meant they increased their agility and were able to respond to change much more effectively because COBOL effectively that's a technology that where they have to build around COBOL and you wouldn't go making the changes to the heart of that. So there's, there's very limited technology skills in that area and very limited appetite to make changes because it's, it's, uh, you know, it's at the core of that system. Whereas moving it to a new architecture that allows you to break it down into component parts, uh, it provides that agility. 
Similarly, uh, over in the UK for the CAFCAS, the Children and Family Court Advisory Support Service, um, they uh, effectively are, have caseworkers who support uh, children in need, okay? Um, and they have an internal system that all of the caseworkers use. And for them, they're, they have such a high workload. And this is the system that they can use a day, day in, day out basis to record their work with those children, right? And so it was slow and clunky. It was built on an old technology stack. Um, but the core, the data was absolutely um, vital and was the, you know, the, 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 system, the core system of record. And so we were actually able to, to modernize their uh, application. But the important point about this right, was, yeah, fine, we, we modernized the technology stack, but actually it was about the, 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 the user. And we made sure that the user, when we're modernizing, it's not just about technology, it's about the serving the needs and, and making sure that it's user-centered design applied. And so we went from a 42 click process down to eight clicks, simply by having those conversations, by performing that design thinking approach to understanding what the user's needs were, to redesigning the system to meet today's business processes. And so you can imagine the, the, the benefits and the efficiencies that this is bringing to those caseworkers and allowing them to serve more children. Right. So that's the that's the real value, I suppose, when we talk about modernization. And that's why we say when we're thinking about modernization, we need to make sure that it's always centered on the business need and business value and business outcomes. And that's the real outcome. Yes, getting it up onto a good technology stack is important, but actually, what is the downstream business outcome? And that, and that is the, the that's what's most important. Similarly for national highways. And actually just to take a moment um, on this one, we were uh, awarded the 2023 Global Modernization Partner of the Year uh, from Microsoft, which is a prestigious award. Um, and I think we're the first UK and Ireland partner to win that. So we're really chuffed on it. But again, this came down to, yes, okay, they had a legacy technology stack and we modernized towards a cloud native solution. But the important point here was actually, we focused on the user needs and making sure that when we were modernizing, it was actually gonna provide a business outcome. And that business outcome came in the form of 150% faster reporting time. And what that actually means is for this, for this project, right? They're all about um, monitoring UK's roads and reporting on incidents. And the reporting of that incident triggers the response to the incident. So the, it, it's speeding up the reporting time, allows them to clear the roads that much more quickly, allows them to respond to those incidents and to help people that much more quickly. So it's a real public good uh, and it, real, it demonstrates the value of you know, making sure that you have the user-centered design at the heart of it. Um, and, and when you're modernizing, get it to a good technology stack, but that, that allows you to kind of deliver on those business outcomes. Uh, additionally, version one had built IP that we use um, for cloud native development, and that IP allowed us to deliver that project in just over three months. So it's a real, it's a real great story in terms of the technology stack, plus also then that user centered design with the outcomes. So that just gives you a flavor, I suppose, of, of what uh, those projects, uh, what modernization looks like in terms of uh, what good looks like. Now, I want to just touch on uh, generative AI and its impact on modernization, right? And we are heavily invested in this in version one, and we're uh, building out solutions at the moment. And we actually think there's going to be a game changer for some of those legacy systems, because quite often they're just they're they're too expensive to change. No one understands what's involved in those applications, and so we think Gen AI is going to allow us to. Uh, uh, unlock the those applications for modernization. And that will come in the form of capabilities like Gen AI to understand your legacy applications and understand what they're doing at the moment, to automatically convert them into more modern technology stacks, to allow you to have more, a higher quality outcome by enabling test automation. And so we're already seeing that uh, in one of our customer engagements where we use Gen AI to modernize 
Perl application over across the C sharp uh, technology stacks, right? And so th the reality of it is that Spider Rock would never have modernized this application it, it, as it was just too expensive to do that, right? Whereas we were able to demonstrate the ability of uh, uh, generative AI to do that in a more cost effective manner. And that meant an 87% time saving, it's about 600%. In, uh, uh, improvement in the time to convert that code, right? So a huge saving that uh, that it demonstrates in terms of those legacy applications can be modernized much more quickly. And so I think that's something that's going to be part of that story in the future. I think Gen AI can, is going to have an impact on your end users, right, in terms of what they expect from your applications. But I think it can also then help in terms of how you deliver those services, how you modernize those services. So hopefully that's given you a flavor of, you know, the, the need for modernization and then it's, it's where, what good looks like, right? Uh, and I suppose I just want to take a little bit of time to some practical steps in terms of, you know, what does that journey look like and what you need to consider when beginning your modernization journey? What are the important factors that make sure that you're pointed in the right direction before you even start? Um, what things do you need to, to, what decisions do you need to consider? What are the, 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 the factors that are gonna influence your approach? So the first point I'd say is that it's really, really important to have a clear understanding of what you're trying to do. And we see it across customers and in some of the most mature customers, uh, you know, Fortune 500 and public sector customers, quite often this is something that's where we fall down, is that there is not a clear understanding of what we're trying to do. And it's not a shared understanding of what we're trying to do. And so it's so important to create that shared understanding and context of the driver for your modernization or the driver for implementing your IT systems. And that you really understand how this aligns to your business objectives and that you've agreed and understood up front what the KPIs are going to look like and what the return on investment is going to look like so that we're, we're, everyone understands and uh, is on the same page. Again, what we also see is that actually being organizational ready is, is a precursor and you need to make sure that actually you've engaged your stakeholders early, that you're bringing everyone on the journey with you. Because if you're going to invest significant funds, and we understand that this is something that, you know, every uh, euro of investment counts uh, for SMEs, right? And so making sure that you are spending that money wisely and that everyone's on board with the driver for that and, and the return on investment is really important and that you understand the skills and capabilities you're going to require for implementing this technology and what that change is going to look like and how it's going to impact your business and that you've got the right sponsorship from the very top of the business. That you choose your solution wisely, right? So there's lots of options here and it can be overwhelming, I would say, uh, for the business to decide in terms of what is the right approach. You know, many products and cuts and SaaS out there. Um, there is obviously, you can go bespoke and write your own systems and build your own systems to meet your bespoke needs. You can use low code to try to accelerate that. You can use platforms. So there's, there's a lot of different options out there. And so how do you understand what's the right option for you? And, and I, I suppose the most important point here and again this is something that we constantly uh, see with customers is you really need to have clarity on your requirements and understanding how that solution aligns to those requirements so that you're, you, you, it is effectively the right solution and so making sure that you've you've taken the time to write down the requirements and how then that maps back to the business objectives is really important right you also need to then make sure if you're thinking about product or SaaS or any any solution, right? Review review your licensing really carefully and understand what are the implications in terms of uh, the license model. Quite often, these things can be on a per user basis, 
and so the devil is in the detail and yeah you, if you don't understand that correctly it can it can uh, uh, be a bit of a sting i suppose right um and then the last thing as well is like think about those reusable capabilities when choosing your solution you want to rationalize your it estate and we see it where one part of the business doesn't talk to your and they actually acquire and procure it solutions that overlap uh, quite heavily so if you can start to break down into those capabilities and say, and actually, we need to provision and we need to procure this particular capability, then that's something that can serve the entire business. Right. And so do start to think about how that how you rationalize that uh, your IT estate in that manner. I mentioned before this move towards a federated accountability model. And uh, what that is also leading towards is a a significant uh, shift that we're seeing with our own customers at the moment around interest in FinOps and cost management, financial operations, right? Um, the business want higher visibility and governance around the end-to-end -end cost of application estate and IT, right? And before there was a budget assigned to IT and the IT just delivered that and it was all bucketed into one and some of the budgets IT, maybe and some of the budgets in business for, for projects. And so it can be hard to track effectively where the, the, the total cost of ownership of given applications. So that is something that we, we, we advocate strongly with our customers is that you, you really understand how you track your cost from start to finish of a project, be it with the, the third party costs and also in your own CapEx investment costs in terms of building that solution out right and so there's there's a number of different things you can do there in terms of uh, setting yourself up for success and being able to capture that information and to be able to uh, surface that effectively via dashboards and whatnot um now i've mentioned the ai piece a couple of times here now right and I suppose if we're starting to think about you know, that's something that you will want to embrace as part of your own future technology strategy and your own business strategy. Um, then what's really important here is that actually you've got a, a strong foundation for AI. And the important thing about AI is, right, the, 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 the major branch of AI that, that we, we see in the market is machine learning, okay? And that's effectively, it learns from data. It looks at historical data and then tries to predict new data. All right, and that's what all of the, the generative AI and all that good stuff is, is doing. It's learned off all of those uh, Wikipedia documents or images on the on, on, on the public internet, and it's then able to generate new content, right? But and we can see it also in terms of the bias and whatnot. Um, you know, it's all it learns from what it sees. And therefore, if you've only got bad data, right, then it's not going to be able to provide good insights into you. So as you modernize your systems. Start to think further ahead in terms of if I wanted to be able to do some predictive models down the line or to do something with my data, what would that look like? And what sort of quality data would I need? And, and therefore, you start to build that into how you design your systems and making sure that you capture the data effectively so that it can be used for uh, those types of purposes. So that is something that's really important to get right early, and that'll bear fruit for you down the line when you start to go on this journey. What I'd say about uh, Gen, AI, Gen AI in particular is it's good with unstructured data. So Gen AI is only one branch of uh, AI, right? And it really depends on what your use case is. But as we've all seen in the uh, out in uh, the last year or so, this is something that's you know very um, popular at the moment. And it's really good with unstructured data. And so this is something that you can start to embed quite quickly onto your business systems. So that's something that you, you can start exploring now. And we see a lot of our customers exploring it. Um, and what our advice, I suppose, is to start small, but start now, right? Um, the, the models that are out there at the moment, uh, the ones that are available on public cloud, but also they're open source, they're really mature. Previously, we would have had to, you know, you go and build your own model, but we don't really see that now with these uh, latest Gen AI models. It's about 
fine tuning of those to meet your needs and not building them out. And um, so that's something that we'd recommend that you start to, to think about. How can you start to embed those services on your for your customers, but also internally? Um, for example, seeing you know having these a lot of our customers have case working capabilities, and imagine you could start to build in case working bots that could support your workloads. So that's a good example of where we can see that applying to customers. But there are there are many examples out there. I've met, I've touched on this before. Um, it's really important, I suppose, in terms of many projects fall down because they take too long to deliver, right? And the business don't see the outcomes. And by the time they're delivered, actually, the business has moved on. The needs have moved on. The processes have moved on, right? And so we need to move towards much more agile delivery methodology. It's all about delivering incrementally and quickly and using that agile appro approach using Moscow to make sure that you really understand what is the most important features that are needed for your um, uh, application. And just to explain Moscow, just in case, it's must have, should have, could have, would have, right? And if you can break down your application to say, what are the must have features? We're gonna start there, right? And that allows us to prioritize most effectively what we need to uh, focus on and to start delivering that in an incremental way. Um, and then that, you know, continuous delivery is, I suppose, is something that we're, we're seeing a lot with our customers. It's it's kind of, it is more on the high end in terms of uh, maturity of application estates, but that is something that is, um, uh, allows that new levels of a business agility because it, it allows you to make changes very rapidly to your IT systems. Um, but it's really important then to make sure that you have the quality assurance processes to support how you do that. The last one of the last points here now is that apps are for life, not just for Christmas, right? And, and what I mean by that is too often we're focused in terms of what do we need to do to get this thing live and how do we get this application up and running, right? But we don't think about the whole lifetime of the application and how we're going to manage that application over its lifetime. What does that look like? Who's going to do it? Do we have the skills for it, right? How do we continuously adjust it and, and monitor it? Will we have budget to, to, to keep this alive and to water and feed it, right? If we go with SaaS, and the point there, the third point is around um, SaaS is a different model, right? And, and it's that actually, it brings its own complications in terms of, it allows you to offload the applications to a third party vendor, but it does put you on their release train. And you then have to tie back to the, uh, their updates and so that can be start to impact on, on how you deliver your services because they might release an update that breaks your system. So you have to understand what that release cadence looks like and you have to understand the investment that you're going to have to make to make sure that you're aligned to that and that it's going to work effectively for you and that you can accept those updates. Um, and the other point, last point I'd make is around you know, making sure that you assign application owners, that you're moving towards that product mindset around uh, having application owners to 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 mind and what uh, feed and water that application so in summary what i'd say is right the important point is we need we need to make sure that this is your applications meet your uh, today's demands right and, and from a business and it lens that looks slightly different right but they, these are the needs of the business and IT in terms of, you know, a good experience. Yeah, it's agile. Um, it's you know, in, embedded intelligence and whatever else. From an IT perspective, you know, it's it's modern technology. It allows it's integrated and allows you to in, uh, interrupt uh, operate with your other IT systems. You can change it quickly. It's lower support costs, right? So you need to make sure that you are meeting today's demands. But going back to that point uh, about the, the, how Gen AI is impacting, we need to future-proof for tomorrow's needs um, and understand if we start to build out our IT systems now, we can see that the technology landscape is shifting so quickly and user expectations are changing. And so your applications are going to be around for quite a while. So you not only think, need to think about how today's needs, but you actually need to think about well, what, how will that application work in five years from, to, from now, 
And how will it serve the users from five years from now? How do I future proof my application to actually to, to, to support users in that way? That's uh, pretty much the, the presentation over. So I just want to call out actually um, the, my thanks to Enterprise Ireland to allow, for allowing me to uh, present on that story. Um, and what I'd also call out is actually we, version one, are actually a customer of Enterprise Ireland ourselves. Um, and Enterprise Ireland have supported our story and our global ambition. I'll give you a couple of examples of that. We have an AI lab which explores disruptive technology. All right, and, and is working with customers to understand how these technologies impact. And Enterprise Ireland helps to support that. We That lab has built out a solution that won a global Red Hat Innovation Award. We have a separate IP development team um, for Oracle Enterprise uh, uh, EPM and ERP systems. And that won a European uh, Innovation Award only this year. Our IP development team for cloud one global partner of the year, and that is also supported by Enterprise Ireland. So um, really significant support comes from Enterprise Ireland, and uh, we're, we're delighted to be on that journey with you. And uh, thanks for, for presenting, or allow me to present at this. John, thank you very much. Thank you so much for such a fantastic overview and some really compelling thoughts and insights there. Um, I find on one of your initial slides, the uh, uh, forty percent of IT spend um, is attributed to technical debt, and uh, I find that quite um, stark. And also, you know, just that point around technical debt is not just for software companies; it applies to to all all sectors and all companies that have software systems and applications in their organization. Um, and just on that, Tertia, like I think yeah. the important point there is that we need to educate all of the business on what that the importance of that because they think it's a, a technology only thing and who cares right but we don't really see the downstream impact we don't really understand what that means from a business perspective so helping to educate users more effectively in terms of the cost of technical debt actually will allow us to to unlock that yeah absolutely um we have a couple of questions in um john i i just have yeah. one general question um myself which is around you've spoken a lot about um you know SaaS low code um the extensibility of enterprise systems like technology has never been so accessible never been so configurable as it is today yeah. and there's so much on the market but to the point for non-tech companies it can nearly be overwhelming in terms of what's the right solution for them to choose um, and it can nearly lead to, OK, it's it's easier just not to make that decision. What's your advice to companies to to, to get them over that fear of, um, you know, potentially selecting the wrong solution for their needs? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a great question, Sergio. Thanks very much. Um, I, I'll probably bring it back to some of that advice I gave earlier around making sure that you really understand the context in which you're operating. Right. And that you understand what you're trying to achieve that you really understand the requirements for what you're trying to do so that whatever solution you decide upon, it matches up effectively because that's the number one risk that we see um, in terms of why projects fail is that we didn't really understand them correctly, right? And that we as uh, you know business don't shape and form the, uh, the need effectively. And so, being able to nail that down and, and understand the requirement is really super important in making your technology choice. You then have to then align it to your capabilities, right? And so understanding your where you are on that maturity level, uh, which is the right solution for you? Are you going to go bespoke uh, because you have very bespoke requirements? Th that can that could be the answer, right? But then you need to make sure, actually, from I mentioned Absha for life, right? Then you have to make sure that actually you have the capability to to manage that, support that, to run that. Okay, so it's it's what I'd say. It's really just taking that time up front to consider all of those factors that I mentioned is going to help you making a more informed decision. Um, now, I also say that consultancies can help in terms of guiding. Uh, customers who are not sure and where this is not their bread and butter because 
it, that can be something in terms of maybe, it, there's obviously a cost to engage with a consultancy, but there can be a larger cost in terms of going off on the wrong track. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you. And we have a question in around fine tuning an existing AI model. Yes. And um, so is there a model you'd suggest starting with to trial on unstructured data relating to customer interactions? Yeah, so there are a number of models that are out there, actually. Uh, and I suppose it depends on your technology stack, right? And um, um, uh, if you already have are working with uh, any of the vendors. Um, what I'd say is, we, we so we're looking at open source large language models at the moment, right? Because we know that some customers would be nervous and cautious of cloud, right? But the reality of that as well is that it's about half a million to run, to buy the server you need to run open source models on prem, right? So uh, I, if I was starting, I wouldn't be starting there, right? Um, and therefore, it's it's probably some of the cloud based models that we suggest, and and, and actually the one that we see uh, leading is around on on the but Azure and AWS space are are very strong, right? Uh, and so we've done a number of. Uh, engagements with customers on uh, those models. So Azure OpenAI and then on the AWS side as well, on the Bedrock side. And they're, they're, they're very good uh, uh, large language models that are, are worth exploring. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And there's just one last question in, which is around um, how modernization can improve your security posture uh, for organizations. Yeah. So it's an interesting question, right? Because legacy technology can, uh, one of the big issues, I suppose, with legacy technology is that it can run an unsupported and unpatched technology stack, right? And that brings a risk because that that is a, effectively a way for, for um, you know, cyber criminals to attack your organization. And so it's really important for you to be running on a modern technology stack that is supported, that is fully patched, that is secure, right? Um, now, it's not a panacea, right? And you, it, it, it just by moving to modern, it changes your security posture. It can help, it, it'll definitely help avoid in terms of you know, moving to a supported technology stack, but it brings its own challenges in terms of you know, modern ends up actually, when you break it down into capabilities and you start to decompose it, it increases the number of attack vectors. And so that's actually something you need to think about in terms of, well, actually, now we've got lots more moving parts and the system is only, you know, the weakest link uh, is, is the, what, you know, how, what they'll attack. And so it's really important to think about, um, you know, yes, we want to be able to modernize and to move towards supported technology and making sure that we are remaining in support, um, but that we understand what, our current, what that future uh, state looks like and how we secure on that uh, and how we uh, segregate services so that we we are not uh, um, attacked too easily, I suppose. Brilliant. Fantastic advice, John. Thank you so much. Um, we're a little bit over time, so I'm just going to close out. I'll ask you to stop sharing your screen. And yep. Just so that... Um, shit. One second, sorry. Sorry, all I'm having a bit of technical difficulties with my own screen share. Um, I will just remind people to, to go to Enterprise Ireland's website and the um, client solution series for more information on su such webinars. I want to thank everybody um, for joining today's session. Sorry, uh, one second. There we go, sorry. I want to thank you all for joining today's session and taking um, almost an hour out of your morning. We really, really appreciate it. And a very special thanks to John Bulger for, for joining us today and giving us such a fantastic overview. Um, you can see here, for more information on Enterprise Ireland supports, contact the Client Solutions team uh, on clientsolutions at enterpriseireland.com along with the telephone number 01727 With that, I'll close the session and wish you all a, a, an absolutely fantastic day. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.